Happy Monday, all you Minties. This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and today we're going to break the rules. We're not going to be talking about my top 10 favorite horror-centric graphic novels. We're going to be talking about my top 13, so please stay tuned. And welcome back, everybody. Now, it was recently brought to my attention that I have been doing hidden gems uh, for horror-centric graphic novels and uh, collected editions. However, I had not done my top list, like my top 10, top 20. So I thought about that because I thought I did it last year with Wonder Woman Maddie, but I went back and watched it. That was just us talking about our favorite horror uh, graphic novels and collected editions. Not my top list. So you're right. So here it is. My top 13. Normally I do 10 or 20, but I was like, screw it. Let's break the rules today because, you know, Season of the Witch and all that. Let's go ahead and do 13. Keep in mind, this is my list. It's just my opinion. And whatever your opinion is, leave it down below. I'd love to know what your list is. Um, because, you know, there, there are things that you're going to find in here that I've talked about before on my other list. There are things that might surprise you that are not on this list. So keep that in mind. It's just my opinion. It's all subjective. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Kicking off this list is Gideon Falls by Jeff Lemire and Andre Sorrentino. This is a graphic novel that was originally printed as a comic book a monthly comic book from Image Comics. I think there's only three trades available so far. I'm not sure if they're done with the series because they keep bringing it back, but it was a very interesting psychedelic trip for me when I read it back in 20... I think uh, The Amazing Amanda and I read it back in 2019, early 2019. It's full of just frightening delights, and it's got a dual narrative. That's how it kicks off. But I will say it's a little bit of a slow burn at first because you're introduced to two different characters, and then with these two characters you're also exploring the urban legend of the black barn and it's a structure that appears throughout history to foretell death and madness so we're introduced to the lives of a reclusive young man obsessed with a conspiracy theory uh, in the city's trash and that's Norton and then we also meet a washed up Catholic priest that arrives in a small town and the small town is full of secrets um, and death and murder and that is Father Fred. And their worlds are about to come together because of this barn. And to me, this feels like an excellent episode of The Twilight Zone. And but with some really strong horror elements. Because Sorrentino's artwork is just so damn good in this. It's creepy. It's It looks... To me, this is better than the, the work they've done before. This is the team that did Old Man Logan. And... I really think Sorrentino's stylized artwork works better for this material than anything he's done in the past. Um, it just, it is so good, it's so real, it's so creepy. But it's not just the artwork, it's also the use of these colors. Whether you think he's using enough or not enough, it's really cool because it works. It works with the tone of this horror story. Berserk by Kentaro Miura. You knew it had to be on my list. Of course it's on my list. It is, it's on my list of the best manga of all time. It is dark fantasy. And the reason I added it is because there are some horrible imagery that you will see in this book. It is not for the faint of heart. As a matter of fact, this one, yeah, I mean, it's got just so much brutality in it. And a lot of pictures, a lot of these demons that are existing in this world will be forever embedded in your head with or without a meme or a gif that people have put together over the years. I'm serious. If you've not read this for the first time, it is not for the weak of heart. And I say that as my favorite manga is I want to push this on everybody, but it's not for everybody. So it is the story of Guts and how he joins a band of mercenaries in this demonic world. And you slowly start to see how this world is really just a battleground for the forces of good and evil. But is there even any good? Because even the characters that are good are so broken. Oh, it's wonderful. Best manga I've ever read. Coming out in deluxe editions from Dark Horse. To me, that's the best way to get them. But you all know I know that I have to add this on the list. Marvel Horror Omnibus. Last year, I had the privilege of getting an advanced copy of this omnibus. And normally when I do these advanced copies, I try to read the first five six issues to try to get an idea of what the uh the comic is about if i'm not familiar with the material right and this was something i really wasn't familiar with because i had not read a lot of these uh characters in the past but we're talking about uh zombie brother brother voodoo the living mummy 
It, the Lemmy Colossus, the Golem, Gabrielle, the Devil Hunter, the Scarecrow, and then Mordred, the Mystic. And these characters had appeared to me, you know, from time to time in an issue of Hulk, an issue of Avengers, but I wasn't familiar with their origin or where they originally came from. But I fell in love with this particular anthology because it's so damn well put together. Uh, there is a follow-up that came out this year, Marvel, Marvel Horror Lives Again. But back to my original point, I didn't put this book down. When I w went to read it at 9 o'clock, uh, my family went to bed early and I stayed up till 4 o'clock in the morning. My wife came out there and like, w w what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm doing a little bit of research. I hadn't read any of it. I just had so much fun. Because it reminded me of those days of uh, reading things like Tales from the Crypt when I was a kid, when I found books that I wasn't really supposed to be reading. So that's what this reminded me of. And you've got the talent of Doug Manch, Steve Gerber, Tony Isabella, Gene Colan, Don Perlin, John Buscema, Big John, I uh, love his artwork, uh, Len Wein, and Bill Mantlo, just to name a few of the creators. And all of these uh, comics that are collected in here took place in the 50s and 60s and 70s. So it's a wonderful collection. Black Hole by Charles Burns. This was originally published, I think, as 12-issue maxi-series from Fanagraphics, but this is the Pantheon Illustrated Edition. So there's a hardcover edition, and then there's this soft cover. My wife gave me this, I don't know, five, six, seven, I can't remember, many years ago. And my wife always finds all these obscure books that I've never read of. And this is one that was a sleeper hit for me. I never heard of this uh, when I got it. Now I think there's a huge following behind it, and rightly so. So pretty much this is all set in the suburbs of Seattle during the mid-70s. And the story follows a group of teenagers who contract a mysterious sexually transmitted disease. Now you probably have heard of It Follows, the movie, and it has a lot of similarities to this, but I think this is even creepier because this bug, this, this virus that they get, starts to give each one of them a unique transformation, like a physical mutation to their bodies. And it's nasty. Like some of the things that happen to their bodies, uh, some parts of your body are starting to appear somewhere else. And it's all... You know, you have this tone, so of course it's for mature readers because there's a sexual tone about the whole book. So there's a lot of sexual content, uh, a lot of language, and a lot of violence. So, again, keep that in mind. So you have some of these kids running away, and it really focuses at first on two main characters. You have Chris, who is the popular and respected female student, and then you have Keith, who is a stoner and just suffers from anxiety. And the narrative changes back and forth between them and through them you get to meet different characters but uh i'm serious like the images in here will be forever and i say that a lot about some of these books but are forever embedded in my head just some of the things that they've had that the, these kids went through um uh, gross i guess so if you if you have a queasy stomach maybe skip this one House of Mystery. This is the omnibus from DC Comics, and there are two so far. There's also a House of Secrets, so that was the sister mag uh, comic that was coming out at the time. I read these originally in uh, was Showcase Edition, which was the black and white, really cheap printing of these books. And I love them, because if you know me and you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably know what my number one pick is going to be, even though this is not a countdown or anything. But I love anthology series. I love books that collect four or five stories in each of them. I feel like I'm getting my money's worth, even though they're short, even though some of them are hokey. But that, that's where this all started. This all started from the fall of EC Comics, uh, when Joe Orlando left and he helmed these books over at DC. So you have, and you're gonna see a lot of these names uh, from the from the Marvel books too, but you have Len Wein, you have Gil Kane, Alex Toth, Bernie Wrightson, Marf Wolfman, Sergio Aragones, um, Al Williamson, uh, Wally Wood. So a lot of these people that worked in EC and over at Warren magazines came over. But the interesting part is that they're limited to what they can write, both in this book and in the Marvel book, because there is no gore. There is no um, zombies that their eyes are falling out. There's no violence. So you have to get really creative when you're telling horror stories with those restrictions. And I found it awesome the way the loopholes that they would work around and then some of the stories in here are creepy themselves but for the most part i think this is a really fun adventure into the horror genre so keep that in mind when going into this especially the first collection now um, it, this one is hosted by kane 
from uh, Cain and Abel, who you'll later see in Swamp Thing, who you'll later see in Sandman, but this is where they got their start. They are the host of the books, like the Crypt Keeper is for Tales from the Crypt. So that's something that they have in common. But like I said, um, most some of these are goofy, and then some of them are really good. Tomie by Junji Ito. And that is a name that you're going to see probably on everybody's list, especially when they're talking about manga or horror. But most people put Uzumaki, I think, or Fragment of Horror. But to me, this was the one that did it for me. This originally came out a few years here in America under the title Museum of Terror. It had stories from Tomie and it had stories from Shiver, which is an all, also an excellent collection. It's really hard to go wrong with Junji Ito, honestly. But this is the one that just, holy crap, I will never forget just throwing this damn collection of my Museum of Terror. I was doing a review of the book for a magazine that I was uh, writing articles for at the time. And if you know me, I love horror movies. I love getting excited. I, used to, I mean, I grew up watching The Exorcist and Rosemary's Baby and The Omen, you know, when I was like six, seven. So I probably shouldn't have been watching them, but whatever. But... You know, it's hard for me to get scared, but I remember there's some images in here and I threw the damn book and I went upstairs. I've told the story many times and I started watching Full House, like reruns of Full House because I was like, I, I got to get this out of my head. So Tomie Kawakami is the female fatale with long black hair and has a little beauty mark under her left eye and she can seduce nearly any man. And drive them to murder, murder other people, and sometimes she is the victim herself. So she messes with people's heads. Uh, sometimes she just keeps coming back. She is the, the like the, the 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 cat came back the very next. She is the creepy woman that came back the very next day. There is not much I can say about this book without doing it justice. But not that the story is perfect because you know I think Uzumaki is a better book, but it's the imagery that does it for me. Um, it's the scenes that of her face in the stall. Oh, if you read it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It almost, even though you're following the story of Tomie, it goes through different periods. Like there's uh, a few decades of work here from Junji Ito. It was, I think, his very first manga, if I'm not mistaken, or published manga rather. So you'll see a change in his artwork as well. But you're following this woman and is she really a woman is she really a girl or is she just some kind of horror creature or supernatural thing whatever she is she's the draw to the book it's her deplorable personality that makes these tales work so damn well and that's why i'm recommending tomie for this list harrow county by cullen bunn and tyler crook you damn right you're gonna see Colin Bunn's name on this list. It was on my both like two hidden gems that were horror centric collected editions. Of course, he's going to be on this list. This is a series that is published by Dark Horse. There are four of these oversized hardcovers, and they are evergreen. They reprint them, so I know some of them are out of stock, so just keep an eye and they will be back. And it is the Southern Saga of Haints. That's what haunts are called down in the South. And witches. And you have this beautiful watercolor, almost fantasy-like artwork that Tyler Crook does. And it's one of the best books I read last year. I think I did an overview of all four of the books last year. I fell in love with Emmy, who's the main character, and her friend, Bernie. And to me, this is just one of the most perfect stories and it, it does have horror elements and supernatural elements, but I feel like it's more about uh, friendship and who you can trust and family and what the what the meaning of family really is. So let's go back to the plot, because you have Emmy, and Emmy is your protagonist. She could be the reincarnation of the most powerful wicked witch that has ever existed in Harrow County. And then you have Bernice, who's her lifelong best friend. And Bernice has been learning her own way of doing spells, magic spells, and how to use magic and manipulate it in order to defend the ones that she loves and her her town. 
And I think that's really cool because both the, these girls, you know, were best of friends and now they may have to come and clash. So here's the secret. This is honestly the reason I did a top 13 because I was going to do a top 10. Then I'm like, no, I got to get Harrow County in there, even though I read it last year. But if I'm going to get Harrow County in there, I got to get Gideon Falls. So that's how we came to 13. But this book, seriously, it is epic. It is wonderful and probably would make a really good movie or a good TV series. But I mean, that this to me is what a graphic novel strives to be. And at this moment, I just want to remind you all to hit that like button if you haven't yet. That helps with our algorithm and helps our YouTube channel grow. And subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. We put out videos every day. Let's get back to that list. Hellboy by Mike Mignola. Back to back, another library edition from Dark Horse. But of course this has to be on this list. It is Hellboy. It's horror elements meets goofy comedy meets badass action superheroes. This almost is a superhero book, honestly, without capes, right? Just trench coats and mighty fist. So it all starts in the days of World War II, an occult Nazi scientist, uh, along with Rasputin, who's a sorcerer, tries to summon a demon from hell and bring about Ragnarok to end the world. They don't succeed. They accidentally summon a little Hellboy baby. And that baby grows up to be Hellboy. So instead of being evil, this baby grows up and uh, decides to become a paranormal investigator and fight these dark forces that are trying to destroy the world. And the ones that summon him. As a matter of fact, in the first story arc, you get to see him reunite with the person that tried to summon him. And it, it's just wonderful. I love the way that he adds all these different myths uh, from the different cultures into his stories. So it almost feels like you have like a different creature from Japan, from South America, from their own urban legends and myths. And he adds a small twist to it to make it all feel like it's all part of this Hellboy world. So if you've not read this, I think it, it's time to meet Hellboy and the rest of the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense, like Liz, Ape Sapien, Lobster Johnson. When are we going to get a Lobster Johnson omnibus? And yeah, it's just, it's a perfect, perfect example of what a fun slash horror comic can be. Station 16 by Yves H. and Hermann. I'm sure that is not how you pronounce these two father and son team. I love making this list because... I love introducing people to new books. I love underrated books that a lot of people sleep on. And that's why I love when you all reply back with like, oh, if you like that, you should read this. Because I enjoy that. I enjoy the feeling of, how did, how is nobody talking about this? And I feel like this is one of those books. All the other books you're going to see on this list are probably on everybody else's list. But this is one that I don't see on anyone's list. This is Station 16. And it was published by Dark Horse. I want to say back in... I got it back in 2014 when it originally came out here in America. So it is a translation. The least I say about it, the better. Because there's so many twists and turns. And it's less horror, even though it has some horror elements and more supernatural. So it feels like a more like a Twilight Zone episode or a Black Mirror episode. So pretty much the premise of the story is it takes place in the Arctic Circle and there's a Russian expedition team or a Russian federation. That, uh, it's a group of scientists and military people. Uh, they get an SOS from an old station, a Station 16. And nobody's supposed to be there. It's supposed to be abandoned. And this is where they did like nuclear testing and things like that. So, of course, they go and investigate. And that's all I will say about that. It's the things that happen, and there's a very short read. It's a quick read, but one that you will not regret reading. I must have reread this thing, I don't know, 10 times since I bought it. It's wonderful. Lock and Key by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. This is one of my favorite IDW series, and it's it's one of my favorite horror books. I love this storyline because, again, it goes back to just being about family, right? Uh, there are six hard, little hardcovers available. There's three master editions, but then there's other side stories. And we also have a compendium coming out that has all of this. I think that's been postponed until next year. There's a TV show, which, honestly, I couldn't finish watching. I think I watched three episodes, and not for me. They changed the story too much for me. So if you've seen the TV show... This is a lot better, or a lot different, rather. It follows the story of the Locke children after their father is gruesomely murdered uh, in their home in, in during a home invasion. But there's a lot more to it than that, of course. So the mom and the kids pack up their bags, and they end up returning back to their father's childhood home, in Key House. 
and that is in secluded Lovecraft, Massachusetts Hill. And there are so many cool twists and turns in here. It's about reincarnation. It's about uh, revenge. It's about getting superpowers uh, and unlocking them. Uh, there are ghosts in here. There's some heartbreaking moments in here. And it was one of those books that at first I didn't dig because of Rodriguez's artwork. Because it's very anime-ish. It's very uh, Arthur Adams, Joe Madureira, uh, Nick Bradshaw. And I didn't think that fit the tone of this particular story. But it works. I promise it works. So if you're turned off by that cartoony artwork, especially when you're reading about horror, the payoff is good. Because there are certain things in here in the way that Joe Hill writes it with the twist and everything that I, I can't see anybody else do besides Rodriguez. I think it's 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 perfect and both of them put out this masterpiece and it's it's a book that I want to keep reading about. So maybe that's why they keep making short stories because they know people like me exist that are like, I want to keep reading about these characters. I want to keep reading about some of these characters that barely made a cameo in here because they're interesting enough to carry their own series. Probably why they keep printing books every year, I think. Creepy. Now found in the Creepy and Eerie Archives, published by Dark Horse. This was a magazine that was all in black and white and, you know, anthologies. Very much like Tales from the Crypt. And, damn, I, the artwork in here and the wonderful talent that went into these stories is just phenomenal. And I think it's overlooked because it was black and white, but now we have these wonderful collections. They also are the ones that published, uh, Warren were also the ones that published Vampirella. So you have Uncle Creepy and Cousin Eerie, and they're both hosts like the Crypt Keeper, or like I mentioned, Cain and Abel, that introduce these anthology stories. I think there's like four or five stories per magazine. And so the dimensions of this is a little bit, bit bigger than a comic book or even an omnibus. They're longer, so they're almost like magazine size. But they're wonderful collections. Uh, Archie Goodwin was the big editor on this. He was a big fan of horror. Uh, and he pulled so much talent, not just from America, but he went overseas to a lot of these European, or mainly like Spanish and Italian artists. There's a lot of work in here by Frank Frazetta. But you also recognize names like Neil Adams, uh, Gray Morrow, Steve Ditko, Johnny Craig, uh, Reed Crandall, uh, Wally Wood, again, Alex Toth. And Angelo Torres, just to name a few of the ones that stood out to me. I think Warren did things a little bit different because they were a little bit more mature content. Yes, there was violence in EC Comics, but this showed things that most comics here in America at the time weren't showing. And that is um, some adult content with nudity. So there is some of that in here. Oh, Bruce Jones did a couple stories in here. And they actually adapted into the uh, Masters of Horror, the Jennifer story. Ugh. But anyway... Um, Fair warning, you will be addicted to these books if you start reading them and enjoying them. There are over 20 volumes of each creepy and eerie magazine, so keep that in mind. Um, and I think most of them are still in print. But it's not like you need a volume 1 and volume 2 immediately. You can jump around because these are anthologies. It's not a continuing plot that's going on. I mean, sometimes within the magazines there's reoccurring characters. But it's not like if you miss a volume, you're going to be missing out on a story. From Hell by Alan Moore and Eddie Campbell. This is the hardcover from Top Shelf Publication. And I know there's several releases of this. There's been soft covers, oversized hardcovers. Uh, I think there was a limited edition one. But this is a horror book that I don't hear a lot of people talk about either. But, I mean, it's, it's, on, it's on some people's list. I mean, then we had a movie. Was it Johnny Depp in that movie? I can't remember. Uh, but this is... One of my favorite horror reads. I've read this a few times. It's Alan Moore, so you know you're in for some heavy reading, so keep that in mind. As a matter of fact, it's kind of slow at first. It's a story of two old men, like, talking on the beach, and it is the story of Jack the Ripper. What makes this not just a horror comic, but also a really interesting historical comic, is the fact that they dive deep into, you know, the theories of who Jack the Ripper was. So that's what I mean by historical elements in here. It's one of the most visceral, thought-provoking, and chilling comics I've read. It's creepy. There's there's a lot of violence. I mean, I don't have to tell you who Jack the Ripper is. So that's the kind of things you're going to see in here. You're going to see bodies mutilated and cut up. There's a lot of autopsies done. But, and, you know, just the way that he treated women. So, again, that's there's a lot of that in here. It's a lot different than most of the other books on the list because these events actually happened. 
And if they happen the way that Alan Moore and Eddie Campbell said it happened, then damn, it, this book has some scary shit in it. So if you've not read it, I think, and you like to be scared, then this is definitely one that you should pick up from the list. Tales from the Crypt. That's right, finishing off this list is the granddaddy of all horror comics. If you've been watching the channel for a few years, this is no surprise to anybody. I've always praised these books, not just as some of the best comic books ever written, but some of the best books ever written. The EC line set the bar so high. And yes, there are other books in the EC archives, uh, also published by Dark Horse, by the way. But there are Vault of Horror, there's Haunt of Fear, there's the Shock and Suspense stories. And a lot of those were borrowed for stories in the Tales from the Crypt TV show. But if I had to pick one, it has to be Tales from the Crypt. There's five volumes available. I don't know if some of them are out of stock. I know they started doing a, um, a trade paperback versions of these, as well as available through Comixology. But there's a reason why somebody wrote The Seduction of the Innocent and why we had book burnings because of books like this, because they were like, well, this is turning kids and in, into psychopaths and murderers, and we have to stop publishing books like this. So this is before the comics code. So some of these covers in here have brutal images. Probably the one that you've seen the most is the one of the decapitated woman. That's in the shock and suspense, I think, or, or the crime. It's not in Tales from the Crypt. But this is this is the one that started it for me. I. I was addicted to these. When I found out that these were comics, that, that the HBO show was based on comics, I had to find these. And it was impossible to find in the little town that I grew up in. So I had to go to a big city, and then I went through the back bins, and they were expensive. So this takes me back to being a kid in uh, grade school and just going through there. My mom and dad had no idea. They thought I was looking for Spider-Man or Avengers or Batman comics, but I was really looking for some of these. And I found a couple of issues, and the comic book owner sold them to me for like a dollar each. And I was like, yes, I got like 10 of these. Um, beat the crap, but I think I've read those things over and over. Anthology series uh, with characters getting their comeuppance. You know, if you do bad things, bad things are going to happen to you. So it's a morality lesson i guess it's almost like aesop tales if you will but with a horror element and that's why we are finishing off this list with this probably something you didn't see on this list is also honorable mentions but i've been doing hidden gems lately so keep an eye on the channel i'll keep uh doing some more hidden gems but that as they say is that most of these books can be purchased from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was my top 13 horror-centric collected editions, graphic novels, uh, comics. I would love to know what you would have on your top list. It doesn't have to be 13. It can be 5, 10, 20, whatever it is. Please leave all those comments down below. Share with me because sometimes some of you all leave books I've not heard of, books I haven't read, books I've forgotten about that I need to get to. And obviously I like reading, so I love sharing my list and you all sharing back with me. And yeah, that was it. This was a lot of fun, a lot harder than I thought to put together. But keep an eye on the channel. I'll be doing more hidden gems, more lists. And I put out videos every day. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, hit like, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. And more importantly, please, all of you, stay healthy, stay safe out there, and have a spooky Halloween.